life and my life is like a lamp to a world that is searching for the path. We have become the example of Christ and we are now the light of the world. Can the world see the radiance of Christ in you? Evangelism does not happen by accident. Discipleship does not happen by accident. If we're going to fulfill our God-given mission as a church, we need to be intentional and reach out and share and introduce people to Jesus Christ. is an amazing continent with 50% of its population under the age of 18. If we impact the children, we would have impacted the future of the church and the future of our world. Each one of us has something to bring to the table. Are you willing to release your resources, surrendering your material goods or your gifts and talents or your time or your heart? What are you going to do? If we're going to plant the 300 churches, if we're going to reach out to a million people through evangelism, if we're going to disciple 100,000 in this nation, and if we are going to have an impact with the poor, with the needy, with children, with all the others who are part of our communities around us, it's not going to happen unless you have committed yourself to the purposes of God and you have been faithful to live by those purposes. church this morning, it's, uh, I've got the feels, uh, because I get to introduce my husband, my one and only, oh. uh, to come and uh, share the word today, to preach the word of God. Bye. And um, I, maybe I, I should start by just introducing us as a couple. Mm. We met about seven years ago, is it? Eight, maybe. Oh, come on. <laughs> We all know who's right. 2010. 2010. <laughs> uh, 2010. We'll yeah, 2010. Just, okay. So, and we met here at church on the internship program. It's the Kinara Leadership Development Program. And if some of you know Andy and know part of his story, you know that he um, lost his first wife through a tragic road accident. And just the very act of continuing with the internship program was an act of obedience. Similarly, I myself had come out of this relationship with a gentleman that I was so sure is the man that I was going to marry. I'd met his parents, he'd met my parents, and so when it didn't work out, I was quite heartbroken when I felt God was calling me towards ministry, and so I did. Mm. And coming into ministry was anything but, you know, a field for let me find a husband. But somehow, you know, God allowed it to happen. Um, we were probably nine months. I was nine months into my internship. No. Hey, we're not sure what. What? Nine months is not something you throw around like that. Hey, <laughs> wait. Even I was shocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are. <laughs> I was nine months into my internship. That's the one. That's yes. When. Um, I get a call from this guy, I was on leave, and, and he's like, oh, hi, Bella, and I'm like, yeah, hi. Anyway, cut the long story short, I didn't know who it was because we never used to talk, really. And um, turns out that he had been stalking me on Facebook. Yeah, pastors, eh? So, <laughs> oh, not turns pastor. out he had been stalking me on Facebook, and, um, you know, he, God, let's put it that way. And, and we got married. Dating was fantastic, you guys. In fact, I pulled out 
my list. You remember that Asuna has talked to us about lists. What's that? It's my list. And um, I wrote many of these lists. All of us probably have. We didn't do this in the first service, so I don't know what's going on. What's going on there? It was my list. Um, and I found this. My mom kept this safe for me out mm. of the many lists that I wrote. Now, I tell you guys, I mm. am a demanding woman. I had 38 things that I wanted <laughs> in the man that I was going to marry. But mm. number one was God-fearing. See, I loved Jesus. Stick. Still do. Yeah. Yeah. And out of, this, out of this list, I think actually, Andy, you may have to take all of them. Yeah. Uh, except <laughs> except safe <laughs> um, but yeah he I, I had he must be able he should be able to sing take huh. uh, loyal take huh. loving take huh. funny take uh, I did have some physical things on there you well. know let's not lie <laughs> Where is that? I, I even drew the picture, good lips. <laughs> Women are so vain, eh? Maybe to your dunia here. Um, yeah, clean, I didn't get that one. Uh, but, you know, it's 39 things. And then I said his hug must fit. You know, a woman wants to be held and feel safe, so... Yeah. No, this Wait. is my list. But anyway, um, our journey has been <laughs> an interesting that one. And for financially stable, that one was a <laughs> lie. <laughs> no, it's not there. It's not there. I'm kidding. I didn't. I wasn't looking for <clears throat> money. But yeah, so we dated and, um, and we got married. Mm. Dating was fun. We did lots of fun things, didn't we? Yep. And it wasn't easy. I'm not even going to lie to anybody who's seated here that it's easier for pastors to stay pure. But I celebrate this man because he made sure I got to that altar pure. Mm. And so thank you, Andy, for leading us well. Um, he put all the things that he needed to put in place to make sure that it happened. Because let's be honest, we are all human. We do have hormones. And if you love someone, you just want to express it in the most intimate way possible. Yeah. And <laughs> you're not going to make this easy for me. <laughs> and uh, he, had, he had some amazing housemates. Mm. If JJ or Tasha are here, thank you. You guys, God used you to ensure that, you know, we made it. We made it to that altar, um, you know, having kept ourselves pure for each other. And um, we got married. And, you know, I think all women have, and men, and men, right? Do you have an image or do you have expectations of mm. what you expect yeah. your marriage will, will look like? And because dating was so exciting, you're like, we're carrying this forward, isn't it? Mm. And, um, and it was. It was okay. I mean, we had our struggles. You're adjusting. You're getting used to this guy who doesn't put stuff where it should belong. But, you know, you can overlook that one. Um, you're getting used to other things. And uh, you're having little arguments like how much sex should you have in a week? Yeah. And, uh, and how much is enough? Yeah. Sure, little Sheka. You yeah. know, and, um, and, and these are the struggles of people who start out in marriage. Now, here's the thing, for when we started to hit one thing after the other, and there were sometimes little things and then sometimes bigger things, because we did face bigger challenges later on um, with my dad getting really ill and then my mom and, and, and she later passed on. We did face big things, um, but whenever I was outward looking to other marriages whom we got married around the same time, they all looked so happy. They all looked like they had it together, and I was wondering, Allah? Like, is it, is it just us? Mm. Why, is, why, why has our honeymoon phase phased off so quickly? Um, and, and you put yourself in that box for, I can't, I can't bring this out. I can't say anything. I'm just going to say all the right things. We're fine. We're doing well. Praise Jesus. You know, he's sustaining us. Uh, but we did face a bump. And, you know, it got to the point where I remember going to sleep one night and, and crying out to God for, but I'm a pastor. People entrust their children to me. Mm. How can I entertain the thought of walking away from this marriage? And if we're honest with ourselves, perhaps a lot of us have found ourselves in that position where we've, 
we thought and questioned, did I really make the right choice? But because we have appearances to, to maintain, uh, because 700 people came to your wedding and heard you say, I do, you think to yourself, I'm not going to say anything. This one goes with me to the grave. And for myself, I rationalized it for I am a believer. And if this is my portion, then I will take it in good stride, you know. But I did have nights where I sat and I cried out to God and I was just feeling so bitterly unhappy and over the state of our marriage. We're not in that same situation right now. Mm -hmm. We did have a mentor couple who walked with us and we tried to reach out to them, but then they had moved overseas and were no longer in the country. And so it just wasn't working out to talk to them and we couldn't imagine who else can we talk to. But it came to a point where my husband led us and I was so open to the idea of let us get help. Let us get help and let's not put up any facade anymore that we're perfectly happy, but let's get the help that we need to make sure that we enjoy this institution of marriage that God created. And on that note, yes. shall I pray for our tithes and our offerings and my lovely dear husband as he just takes us through his word and as we unzip image and the choices that we make. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this afternoon. We thank you that you are here with us. We thank you because you lavish so many good gifts upon us. Thank you for your provision for us in our families, in our homes. Um, and Lord, that we are here, that we are alive, that you gave your son Jesus Christ for us and that we can gather in your house as a result. Lord, for our tithes and our offerings that we have given back to you, we honor you mm -hmm. with them. We ask, Lord, that you would use it to take your word far and wide, that many would come to hear of you, that many would be discipled as a result of our giving. Won't you continue to bless us and bless those who do not have as well? For my dear husband, Lord, I love him, but you love him more, and I ask that your spirit would just rest upon him, and won't you use him and shine through him um, to preach your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love you too, baby. Those of you who have kids uh, in Quest, I don't know if you know, but I, th I think you have an idea that we have one of the most dedicated children pastors in this city, probably in this nation. I'm not just saying that because she's my roommate. I, I say that because she's my roommate. I say it because I... <laughs> She's my room. I mean, I know and I see the kind of dedication that she puts into serving our kids. So please help me appreciate my wife for serving. What a woman. Good afternoon. Mkosawa. It's been an amazing month. We're talking about uh, marriage and relationships. And, and if, you're, if marriage is like a red flag for you, that word just goes like, eh, it just signals different things for you. Um, you can easily just cross that out and, and put relationships. Some of the stuff we've been talking about since we started this month applies to almost all our relationships, honestly. You know, when you consider other relationships in our workplaces or with our friends, uh, you can really apply them there. So uh, let's see what God has for us today, you know. And, and we've, we've purposed really to do everything that we, ca we can here at Nairobi Chapel to um, come around our marriages and come around uh, those of us who are married and those of us who are intending to get married, um, perhaps even those of us who have been living together and want to formalize that. There are all sorts of, you know, uh, programs and, and departments that we've set up to be able to facilitate all this. So because we, we know that this is God's idea. And I'm really looking forward to the retreat. Once again, let me pitch for that. Uh, for those of you who would like to retreat, there's so much we'll be unpacking as well and unzipping in that, in that forum for those four days. So please um, just check out the group at the back there. Uh, we had a meeting this week with uh, Pastor Faith and, and Patrick and there were, you know, all, everyone who's involved in the children's, no, I mean the marriage ministries, uh, together with some amazing couples in this church just to think through that, that retreat and what God has in store for all of us. Uh, can I also just um, quickly big up anyone? Uh, we have some mentor couples in our midst, people who have signed up to mentor those of us who are, you know, younger in, in marriage, maybe married a few months, a few years. And we have some uh, counselors, well, they're, they're really just mentor couples that choose uh, to put up their hand to work with um, some couples as well here in, in church. If you're here, 
I know there's some in the first service. Are you, are you here in the second service? Please stand. Um, you know, those of you who are serving as, as mentors in that department, are you here? Anyone? Not this one. They wake up early. Ah, oh, coolio. All right. No worries. Let's appreciate them then in their absentia. At Wangubu San. Marriage, and marriages are under attack, honestly. You know, I'm that kind of a guy who thinks through, um, I imagine, okay? I imagine that Lucifer has a, like, a, like a HQ, like a, you know, like a HQ somewhere in a secret location and with different floors and different departments. And so, you know, you have the small floors, lower floors with people who are sharing departments, like the demons who are in charge uh, of, of, you know, just disturbing the guys at the back in sound... You know, the guys were trying to figure out sound in, in church services. Those are little, little demons, and they share an office with the, the ones who are in the matatu industry. <laughs> They're in charge of road rage and stuff like that. You're just like, why is it going on the opposite side? What's wrong? Um, but, then, but then the ones, you know, the, the bigger ones that, you know, are in other floors, and, and some of them, uh, I think, because Lucifer is on the penthouse, but like two floors uh, beneath him is uh, the ones who are in charge of sex and sexual impurity and everything, lust and etc. And, uh, you know, when you walk into that reception on the sex floor, uh, behind the reception is, is a vision statement for, for what they do there. Uh, it's, re it's really simple. They say, sex, may all the people who are married, no, it says, may all the people who are married have lots and lots of it, okay? Anyone who's not married to each other, let them have lots and lots of it with as many people as possible. And also, and it says, but let those who are married to each other have less and less and less. This is how, this is their strategy. <laughs> Let people who are not married to each other just do it every time, as many times as possible. And then the ones who are married, oh man, give them, keep, keep, keep them busy. Send them, send them, give them a transfer. Send them where, keep them busy. <laughs> give the women headaches. <laughs> tell, you know, tell them, I'm, you know, tell them they don't feel like it. It's not the right time. Postponed, postponed. This is, me, I've seen those demons. I said, dear Maji, please, <laughs> let me have some water here. I'm stressing myself five minutes into this thing. <laughs> but managers are under attack, listen. And we've been trying to, you know, speak from this pulpit this last week, last three weeks, and just, we've been trying to say that, hey, by the way, yes, marriages are under attack, but this is the solution. The solution is, is in this library of books that was written thousands of years ago. You know, poems and, and, and proverbs and letters. And, I mean, don't you sometimes just think, is it really, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's a nice book. But can we really apply this stuff in our marriages today, 2018, today, in Nairobi, with this economy and the price of the fuel being what it is? I mean, this is really, really practical. Some of the things that we, you read here and you go like, ah, uh, it kind of feels like God has no idea about being married. Do you think he has an idea? I mean, do you ever felt sometimes, but God, you've not, you don't know women. You, I mean, this stuff you're saying here is fine, but let me tell you about women. Because I've, you know, God, listen, I've, I've lived with one for like a couple of years. Let me tell you, that doesn't work, okay? You're telling God, it doesn't work. Or, or you, you've been married to a man and you go like, God, I, I hear you, but, you know, men are dogs, first of all. I don't know if, don't know if you created them, but you, but you didn't know they're dogs and stuff like that. It, it seems like it's not possible to apply this stuff. Kind of reminds me of Peter on his boat, and he's come from fishing at night and he's thinking, I mean, it's just been a long, long night. Sindio, now Japata Kitu has found, and then as he approaches the, the, the shoreline, he's seeing somebody talking to a group of people, and people are gathering, and people are gathering, more and, people are, more and more people are sitting down and they're listening to this guy, and, he, and Peter can tell, oh, this is, this is that guy, this is Jesus. And Jesus is teaching, and man, he's having a profound effect on his, on his crowd. And uh, eventually, Jesus turns to him and says, hey, can I use your boat? I need to kind of uh, draw back into the water so that I can have a good vantage point. And Peter is like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't pay, but hey. You know, he jumps on, and, and Jesus, you know, teaches people, and, and he finishes. And then he turns to Peter and says, hey, so how, how's it been? And Peter says, well, it's, it's, it's a tough night, uh, but hey, you know, I just want to go home and sleep. And then he says, why don't you throw back your net on the other side of the boat? Now, imagine that. Because I imagine, and I think to myself, Peter must have gone, Peter goes like, wait. Listen, listen. I mean, when it comes to teaching and preaching and, and start rap, you know, parables, that's your thing. You're good at that. And from what I hear, your family are good. You know, they make good furniture. That's nice. But fishing, fishing, that's, that's our thing. That's my lineage, okay? I've come, I'm a sixth-generation fisherman. I know about fish. 
So leave that to me. We are not, there's no way you're getting anything right now. We fish at night. Did I tell you? We didn't catch anything. But you see, what Peter doesn't realize here is, you know, the actual question that is being asked here is this, that is it possible that the creator of fish can tell you anything about fishing? Is that a possibility? Okay? And, and sometimes it feels like, yeah, God, you're, you know, you're not, you're not married. We wachana na wacha tuonge na wazee. God is not married, okay? And, and so he feels like he can't tell us anything. But is it possible that the creator of fish can tell us something or anything about fishing? I want us to talk about love real quick and actually define it. Um, if, 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 you know, my first degree, believe it or not, was in mathematics. And then, I don't know where the Rasta came, you know, Rasta's, the Rasta thing happened and here we are. Okay? That, that didn't go nice. Okay, and we used to say, we used to say in this uh, pie chart, we used to say the, that the whole is equal to the sum of its parts. You remember that one? Very simple, uh, nini. what are they called? Pie charts. But let's define love, okay? Before even we get to what this book says about love, we all know, and I know that you know, we all know what love is about, whether you're in a relationship now uh, or you're not, we know what love is about. If I was to ask you, um, if you are to be in a loving... Raving relationship with somebody. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory. If, if you were to be in a loving relationship with someone, listen, one word. If you were to be in a loving relationship with someone, it would have to have an element of what, okay? So that we put all these things on this board and say this is what love is, okay? It would have to have elements of what? Love, okay? No, love is not one of them. One word, please shout. Here we go. Second service. Trust, I heard trust, okay. Respect. I can't hear you. Commitment. Is it double M? Commitment, something like that. Uh -huh. Care. Aha, uh -huh. there's care there, there's uh, sacrifice. Thank you. Keep going. Huh? What are you saying? Patience, come on, come on, people. Wait, Kaisauti, patience. Fidelity is uh, loyalty. Woodwork, we're bringing you down to our level. Okay. Anything else? Keep me. Huh? Kindness, that's a good one. Kindness. Uh huh. Acceptance. Keep going, we're almost there. Let's finish. Huh? You say fun? Forgiveness, I think I have it there. No, it's not here. Give me, give me more. Huh? Fun. Uh-huh. Safety, security. Is this what is security and safety? Okay, cool. Hey, you guys are avoiding one kunanya. Huh? Who said that? Who said sex? I'm giving you a selfie stick. Did you? Who said sex? I'm giving you a. Don't use it. Don't. I. Who said sex? Mom. Yeah. Mom is sick. My coffee. Mom. You know how this thing goes. The selfie stick. I know you were thinking about it, but nobody had the courage to say it. Okay. Give me two more when we were done. Communication. Communication. All right. I think we're done. Well, I think I think you get the point. We can go on and on. And feel these things. You see those demons? <laughs> we can feel these things 17 times over. Okay? Second question. Second question. Okay? If I was to ask you if you're in a relationship and if you're not, assume you're in one. If I walk up to you and ask you, so how are you guys doing? Okay? Okay? So you're dating a guy called Mark and I walk up to you and your name is Sophia and I say, how are you, how's, how, how are you and Mark doing? How are you guys doing? What would you say? Fine. You're fine? You're fine, what else? You're doing great? Okay, cool. It's crazy. It's boring. I mean, it's boring. It's boring. I don't know what's going on, but it's just boring. Oh my, it's crazy. Oh my, hot and sexy. How sexy is over there? Yes, it's hot and sexy. You know? You are probably going to tap into your inner being and, and, and find an emotion to describe the relationship that you're in. If I was to ask you, how are you guys doing? How is that relationship going? You're going to give me, most probably, nine out of ten times, you're going to describe an emotion. You're going to describe a feeling. Okay? But what is love? Your definition, not mine. 
What is love? What are all these things we've put up on the board? A majority of them are what? What are they? Huh? They're what? A choices. A choices. Look at it. Let me mention some and tell me whether it's a feeling or, or is it a choice. Trust. Okay? Respect. Is that a choice or an emotion? Commitment. Care. Sacrifice. Kindness. Acceptance. Fun. I guess an emotion, I can put that one. Maybe that one is, is a feeling as well. Forgiveness. How about loyalty? How about patience? How about sex? Is it? Is it a feeling? Well, if, does, if it doesn't feel good, you're not doing it right, isn't you? Let <laughs> me put a star on sex. I'm not, is it a, it's a choice, eh? An emotion, is, I guess it's a feeling as well. But look at the majority of the stuff on that board. It's choice, 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 feeling, choice, 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 feeling. Now let's turn to the word, okay? First Corinthians, we all know this verse. Paul writes to the Corinthians in chapter uh, 13. This is what he says, for, we all know this. It says, love is patient. Think about it, feeling or choice. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. How many emotions in that verse, in those verses? It's like choice, 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 emotion, choice, choice, choice. In fact, the only emotion I find in that, in that bit of scripture is anger. And it says, don't be easily angered, okay? Love is a choice, is the first point we're making today. If you forget anything else, love is a choice. Say it after me, love is a choice. Again, it is a choice. It is a choice. But you see, this, this is not how it happens in Nairobi or wherever you fall in love, okay? How we get in relationships is this, like, like, like how it happened to me at least. You know, you find someone, you like each other, and, and then you go ahead and do some fun stuff together. You go ahead and, and enjoy some nice meals together. You spend some time with people that you like, and, and it's, it's nice, and it's good, and it feels amazing. And, and you're sitting on dinner one day, you go like, I, I, feel, I feel like there's a future here. Do you feel like we have a future? Oh, yeah, I feel like we have a future. Oh, okay, okay, what, what do you think? I feel amazing. I feel good. Oh, do you want to feel like this forever? Let's do it. Let's, let's do this thing forever. Like maybe let's, yeah, call your people. I call my people. We have some, you know, dowry thing going on. We put up, and then we put a committee together, maybe a wedding planner, and then, and then we get married. This is how we do it. And then we get married, and because issues happen in life, of course, stuff happens, and obstacles come. And now you no longer have fun. The fun is out. The economy being what it is, you're not doing as many dinner things as possible. So the fun is out. The sex is no longer spontaneous after a while. It has to be scheduled. So that one comes off the wheel. And, and, and now you're left with, you feel like one day you wake up and you go like, I don't know. If you ask me, how, how are you guys doing? And you go like, eh, I mean, we're married. We are married. And Bella has alluded to this a couple of years ago, you know, this is, this is where we're at. We were, I don't know how many years married, three or four, but we had gone through so many transitions in that, that short period of time. I think we got married and immediately after left for Bible school in, in, in Sydney and we were there in a different culture and, you know, I mean, it wasn't all bad, but, you know, we're, we're transitioning, uh, we're trying to figure out this love marriage thing and... Uh, and I, I could tell that we're not, it, it, it was not the same as how dating was, and I'm doing everything I can to get us back to when it was hot and, and good and nyama mama kind of, kind of thing, and mama rocks, mamba, mambo zinenda poa. And I'm trying to get us back there because that is, that is what love is about, and it was crazy. Stuff was happening, left, we, we, we couldn't catch a break, I mean a break in, in, in but domains were just coming. We would start a small conversation, and it just escalates into something, and you're thinking, well, how do we, what were we talking about? Weren't we talking about the weather? How did we get, <laughs> how did we get here? And we're nice people. We're not bad people. We're just nice people. But this is crazy. Some of my neighbors are here, and I don't know if they ever heard those, yeah, you know, so there, was a, there was this morning. Nowadays, we laugh about it. <laughs> and we can't even remember when, what the issue was. 
We can't remember what the domain was, but we were having this. It was a, and then it started climbing, and then it was escalating, and she's going up, and I'm going up. And this day, I'm like, this woman has to toe the line. Submit, woman. Submit. 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 <laughs> And I'm not listening to what she's saying, and, and, and she can, I can tell she's, my, my wife is getting frustrated because I'm not listening. And I'm loving it because I want her to really feel frustrated because I want you to think. Stop being emotional. Think. What, that is not a fact. That is not a fact, you know. So, so it's getting, it's escalating, it's escalating, and I'm not letting up. And, and she'd never said this ever before, and thank God she's never said it ever again. And, and, and she was just getting so frustrated, and Bella said, Andy, you're not listening. You're not listening. Shut up and listen. I heard that name, you shut up. Did you say shut up? I, there's a kind of switch inside of me here. There's like a switch that does went ping. Ah, 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 ah. Have you ever talked to people who are not in the room? Oh, you are Oh, oh, you are Nijui. Oh, you are Oh, 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 You know my first language is so when I'm really angry, English doesn't do it for me. I switch back to my mother. <laughs> I'm like a woman I've known for years. I'm, I'm telling her about hey, you don't you, you have no idea. You don't know me. What are you saying? You, you know it was crazy. And one day I woke up and I thought to myself, man, if this is love, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Okay. I don't know if this uh, this was not what, what I signed up for, Bana. And honestly, I was thinking about giving up on the best gift that God has ever given me. And for the first time, I could now see how Jamaz leaves the house and go and get a, a servant quarter somewhere, just for sanity, just for yani, you, you just saw that. For the first time, now I understood why guys, are, are, after work, they go to the bars, they, they must drink, because you can't meet this woman sober. You just, it's, it's, cra it's crazy in that house. The demons on the 17th floor are working on you proper. And for the first time, I could understand how guys go out and get clandes and get side chicks. Because here the arrangement is you don't talk to me. You don't talk back to me. Here the arrangement is, is just physical. I'm going to pay a room for you. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe pay for your kid to be in school. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that the, that's the arrangement. You, you don't have, we don't have, that's, I'll pay you for that, okay? For the very, very first time. By the way, gentlemen, sponsors who are here. You will never get the relationship you're looking for in that other woman. It will never satisfy you. It will never, that, whatever you're running away from, that is not the answer. It will never, it will only make you poorer, but anyway. It will, it will never. And all the clandes and the side chicks and the side guys who are here, listen to me. That stuff, you need to walk away from that stuff. That is not the life that Jesus Christ died and gave himself up for you. And I know that this book looks like, amen. And I know that this book, you look at how God is asking you to live and you think he just doesn't want you to have fun with this married guy. And you think perhaps this book is dead to you. Can I tell you, every time you set out to break the moral law that God has given you, you only break yourself. This book, is alive and well in this generation. And guys, it has outlived anyone and everyone who buried it and tried to kill it. It has outlived all its pallbearers. And when you set out, you can actually never break God's law. You end up just proving it. Every time you attempt to break God's law, you will just prove it right. He puts the boundaries there for you, not for him. So thank God, by God's grace, we, we, we come to our senses and we go like, you know what, we, we look like we're doing okay, but we need help. Have you seen us together, my wife and I? We're a cute couple. Glory to God. Have you seen our children? We're the cutest couple in town. But it is not working. But who can we tell? We are pastors. We're the guys people come to us. You know, and, and so we just suck it up. And, maybe, and then we're thinking, maybe if we're just, the, um, let's be the best parents we can ever be. Maybe if we love our kids enough, it will sort out this issue. Or maybe if we, we become the best pastors we can ever be and just keep volunteering and serving people and serving, then maybe it will sort out this thing. Maybe if we do these things, because this is the image we're trying to keep. Because we live in this media day and age. You can be having the biggest domain over that dinner, but when it's time to take a picture, you're 
hashtag, hashtag me and my bay, hashtag, you know, grinding, you know. But, but lakini watu wamekosana. You walk into this church, <laughs> and you're coming here every Sunday, maybe even holding hands, putting on your best Sunday clothes, but you know this thing is in trouble. But, you, but you, you know, who do you tell? Where do you go? So one day we, we say, you know what? We, we need this thing more than the image that we have. And, and we seek out this mentor couple, these, these guys who are into marriage counseling, and they're older than us, you know, much, much, and they have wisdom. And I remember the first meeting we had, and they were sitting on the couch across the table. And this guy looks at me and tells me, Andy, why are you here? And I could not believe what came out of my mouth. I'm balancing tears. And I say to this guy, I'm here to save my marriage. If you had told me that one day I would get to that point, I would be like, no, no, no. That's for people who are crazy out there, you know, hanyaing and doing all sorts of things. It doesn't happen to some people like us. We, we love each other, okay? We were pure t- until we got married and stuff like that. This is, and so, so that, if you told me that we would ever get to that place, meaning I said, my, yeah, you know, it's not possible, but I said that, I'm here to save my marriage. And they said, look, we have Friday mornings, 9 to 11. That's the time we have. Can you guys make it? And we said, we'll, we'll move everything around. Came back to the office, talked to our pastors and our seniors and said, hey, Friday morning we, we, need, we, we cannot be around. We need to be working on our marriage Friday morning, 9 to 11. And listen, for the next couple of months, it was hard work. I'm not even going to lie. Hard work. Because we're meeting with these strangers, we're talking about our intimate issues, and we're laying it all out, putting it out on the table. We'd leave and get into the car, and we, we're not even speaking. We're just so exhausted. She's thinking, I can't believe he said that. Now, and I'm thinking, I, don't, I can't believe that's what she's been thinking all along when I said this. That's not what I meant. Oh my, you know, and, 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 but, but it's the best thing we've ever done. It was exhausting, but it was very, very refreshing at the same time. And for the first time, we started peeling back this. This, this onion of, of chaos and seeing what the real issues are. So one day, I'm talking to the, this gentleman, and I tell him, you know, I'm, I honestly thought we had the right stuff to make this thing work, honestly. Even when we got, we, before we got married. And, he, and you know what he said to me? He said, and he said, maybe you had the kind of love that's enough to start a marriage, but the kind of love but you didn't have the kind of love that is needed to base your marriage on. He said, maybe you have the kind of love that's enough to start a marriage, but not the kind of love needed to base your marriage on. And I heard God telling me, you know, you have done it your way. Really. Now it's time for you to do it my way. Me, God, the author of all these relationships, because this thing is not your idea. You didn't wake up. I didn't wake up one day and decide you're going to put all these parts here. This one is going to go here, and this one is going to go there, and they're going to connect. I mean, we, this is not our... We didn't come up with this stuff, by the way. Some of you just... I showed up just 35 years ago, into the, and I found this thing here, this thing called marriage. We're not... It is not our way. So it is the person who created it that understands its purpose and how this thing will work. So whenever we sin, you know what sin is? Sin is actually just, uh, it's a violation of purpose. It's a violation of purpose, and it will never satisfy. Love is a choice. And let me, let me remind us about the videos we've just seen, the pictures that have gone up there. And this one I'm going to speak to men and women who are married like myself and my wife. Guys, a couple of years ago you made a choice. Love is a choice, yes, but I want you to remember the big choice that you made. You called us. You're the one who said you have found somebody. And, and you, you, you know, we, you asked us to take you for this dowry negotiation. You're the one, who, I mean, do you remember? And then after it was done, you're like, hey, there's this date. Make a date. We're inviting you. You invited us, and you stood before. In fact, when, when we took us for your show, you made a choice. They even put, you know how they funica the ladies with lessons? They cover them with lessons, and you have to choose. And you, you say, yes, that's the one. The one in the green, I choose her. That's the one I'm here for. Gentlemen, you remember when you did that? That's what you did. You chose. And said, this, is, this, this one is going to be my wife. And ladies, you had to choose. You had to go to your mom sheepishly and kind of go like, mom, ma, there's some Morganis who want to come over to see us. Okay? You made a choice. 
And you have to stick with your choice. Friends, we live in a country where your word counts for nothing. Your word counts for nothing in Kenya anymore. We, we live in a country where people will hold up holy literature and, and declare that they are here to serve and protect, but they know that they've come to kill and plunder. And, and that, is, that is our culture. But friends, we are sitting here today because we belong to a different country and a different kingdom. And in this kingdom that Jesus came to set up, your word is your bond. Do you know you wouldn't be seated here if God never kept his word? If Jesus was a guy who would say one thing and then go ahead and do another thing, I wouldn't be here. We're here because this is a kingdom of people keeping their word. And I want you to remember that vow that you made. David writes in Psalm chapter 15, he talks about, Lord, who can ascend your holy mountain? And he goes ahead and lists these attributes of such a person. A person who can ascend the holy mountain, he says. And in verse 4, do you know what he says in verse 4? He says, he who keeps his promise, his oath, he who keeps his vow even when it hurts and does not change their mind. And God is not asking you for stuff that is not within you, friends. Ephesians 5, 1, God announced, and he's talking to, you know, Paul is telling the, 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 the Ephesians, he's telling them, be imitators of God as children of his. I mean, in other words, you have the DNA. Dad, you have dad's DNA in you. You have the ability to choose and to stick to the choice that you have made. I want you to remember your choice. It is your big choice. Love is a choice. Remember your big choice. And if you're single and dating and, and you're going to make that choice one day, we, we, I'm calling you to remember that choice. That's number two. But I also want us to, here's a little thingy that, that Bella and I learned. Mkosawa? Tunamaliza. I have a bunch of uh, friends, gentlemen that we've been meeting for many, many years. Uh, most of us since we were single. And we still meet every other Wednesday. Um, these are just guys, these are my pole bearers. These are the, my stretcher bearers. The guys who will, if I was sick and Jesus was somewhere speaking, they would move Bomoa, you know, my buddies and pull me down until, until I get, these are my guys. So I meet them every other Wednesday. So I'm, I'm having a meeting. I see one of them there, Devin Yaja. This guy, I digress by the way, this guy, <laughs> whenever we're going through tough times, you know, in marriage and stuff, he has this phrase that I love, and I say, Maga, I'll translate in English. It says, Tukondani na tutoki. Tukondani na tutoki. Iko nini? Sayo tumelemewa. How do I translate? We are, we, are in, we are inside and we are not vacating. We are married men and we are here. <laughs> so I'm meeting these guys. And, and then I text my wife. I said, because the meeting is coming to an end. I say, hey, babe, um, I'm going to be home in 10 minutes. And then we walk out to the parking lot. And, uh, and then stories, you know, stories come up, okay? This guy just comes up with something and we have to talk about it. And then before we know it, this guy has to finish with this guy and this one. And, and I walk into my home one hour, ten minutes later. And I can tell the mood is not very nice. And I'm standing there thinking, what is the problem? Woman of God, do you know how blessed you are to be married to a man like me? I have been investing in our marriage out there. I've not been out there, you know, making things. You know, our pride, man, pride. And, and I'm wondering what's the problem, okay? And, and, and Kumbe, here's what happened, okay? I, I sent a text and I said I'll be home in 10 minutes. Bella told the kids, okay, she didn't put the kids to bed because daddy's going to be home in 10 uh, so that I can come and, and, and pray with them and put them, you know, read the Bible and then put them to bed. So half an hour later, she has to explain to the kids that daddy is not coming, and, and, and threaten them for another 10 minutes, you know, if they don't go to bed, she'll kill them, and, you know, and all this thing is happening, and she, she was about to have dinner when I texted, and, and then she said, okay, well, how about she waits for me, now the food is cold, now she has to put back my food, and stuff like that, and I walk in there, and she's thinking this, all of a sudden, she doesn't think I respect time, I don't, there's no loyalty here, I was doing, you know, kindness, I was 70%, now I'm over here, Okay? Commitment she does not see is not committed, this guy. There's no care. All these things have come off. And I'm standing there thinking to myself, what's the problem? Okay? You see, when we make this, this is, this is a simple graph. Look at them, they're still working. <laughs> 
This is, this is time and this is choices. When we make the right choices, we put a plus on this board. This is Bella and Andy board. And we, when I make a right choice, I put a plus on this board, okay? For example, we're in the parking lot and I think to myself, this thing has gone too far. I, I, maybe, maybe, let me, let me I, I say, guys, let me call my wife. I, I move aside, I call my wife, I say, baby, so I know I, I said I'll be home in 10 minutes, but something has come up. Um, let me call you when I'm in the car. Then I'll know, you know, I'm 10 minutes away. And she's not too happy, but, you know, you know at least I've communicated, right? So I put a plus on the board. And I, and I get home, and I can tell she's not very happy, but she puts a plus. She goes like, he doesn't deserve a hug, but welcome home, she says. She puts another plus on the board, okay? Because the other option was to not call, and I put a minus, and I get home, and I'm like, oh, so you want to be, so you want to be, you want to fura? Ah, sour. Let's, let's do silence. Oh, you want me to microwave my own food? Ah, so I'll microwave my own food. You know, we're putting minuses. That's the other option. Oh, and, and, and you also, we're going to go to bed and uh, sleep back to back. Ah, okay. We'll, we'll see. We'll see, you know. We're all putting minuses on this thing. But if you're putting pluses, we're putting pluses, they actually don't go in this way. They actually go like this. If you put a plus, it goes like this. And we go to bed, and because my wife, uh, I know my wife said, and she's told me, even when she's very angry with me, she, she wants me to cuddle her when she's sleeping. So I go in bed, and I know she's angry, but I go and I kiss her, and I say, baby, you know I love you. And I, and I you know, I, ooh, we spoon, we spoon there, <laughs> and I put a plus. And she wakes up in the morning, and she's, you know, not as mad anymore, and she thinks, she's, she's in a hurry, but she says to herself, let me make my handsome husband some breakfast. She puts another plus. The pluses go like this. You make little, little choices of care, of trust, of concern, of forgiveness, and they go up like that. But the minuses go down like this. They don't go straight. Now, sooner or later, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be hit by something here. And this one comes whether you quote Bible verses or don't. This is just life. <laughs> this one here, okay? Somebody has been laid off. Or now the kids, are, you've just discovered, the doctor said there's something up with the child. That, that is crazy and serious. Or, or, or you have a miscarriage in your, in, in your family. Or somebody in your family that you love uh, has just received, you know, that they have terminal cancer. Or sooner or later, something is, is going to hit you that is larger than life almost, or maybe bigger than, you know. But if you've been putting pluses, you're going to hit this thing over here. Okay? And, and, and it's going to take much less effort to cross over to the other side and keep on making the right choices and you keep going. Boneswa Sifio San. If it finds you at this level, my guy, there's, there's trouble. It's going to take more than a nice dinner and, and amazing sex to jump this thing. This one, it won't happen. Because you've been putting minuses on your board. Love is a choice, and you need to remember your big choice, but it's also in the small daily choices. Little things, little small daily choices. Amen? We're out of time? We have, no, we have six minutes. Listen, I've got good news though. Final news. I didn't know because this kind of thing can, can seem like, hey, I feel like uh, His Excellence. <laughs> Guys, I have good news. Because you may sit, be sitting here and it, it, it sounds like I'm saying, forget your emotions. And if you're in a terrible relationship and it feels crazy and bad, then just suck it up and, and keep moving. There's no hope for you. Uh, just choose forgiveness and kindness and trust and, and patience and all that kind of stuff. That sounds, doesn't sound like stuff you want to sign up for. But let me tell you something. Let me, let me show you how we are wired. We are wired in such a way that if you make the choices of love, if you remember your big choice, and if you keep making the choices of love, do you know what happens? Your feelings and your emotions will follow. I didn't know this. I wish somebody could tell me, Andy, listen, if you keep just, is it, is it terrible? Are you in a terrible marriage? Are you in a terrible season? Look, look, start making the right choices. One more time. And consistently make the choices of love and your emotions will follow. A couple of years ago, we were in a meeting uh, as young men with Pastor Oscar, and he's teaching us about, uh, you know, just life. And he says, guys, I want you for the next couple of weeks to wake up every morning, we're all married, uh, and count five things. 
Con try and look for five things that you're grateful for in your wife. Um, and, and just mention them and say, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for this and this and this and this. And wake up the following morning and do the same thing. So I said, I had nothing to lose. We're going through a tough season. season. I woke up and I started doing it. I said, hey, you know what? My wife is, I mean, we're going through, I mean, but she's an amazing mother. My wife is an amazing mom. And look at how much uh, she takes care of the shopping and that kind of a thing. I thank God for that. And she's good at this and good at the other. And five things. And I wake up and do the same thing the next morning. A month later, I kid you not, a, a month later, I looked at my wife and I was like, pow, check your pow, pow. I'm like, my, my feelings, my feelings are back. <laughs> How else do you think the guys, like, you remember long, long, many years ago when somebody would choose your wife and the other, you know, and you told you know, husband and wife, arranged marriages. This is, how, this is how it was done. They make a choice of love, and, and then the feelings of love eventually follow. I think it's good news. And everybody knows this, not just church folk. Even the people in the media and out there, they know this. Um, do you know this series called The Bachelor? How many know it? Bachelor? The Bachelor? Yes? You know? No? Can I use that example? Or am, I, am, I, am I losing it? You know, The Bachelor. It's this series where we have this well-chiseled Greek Italian looking goddess thingy, it's like, you know, who comes there, they don't pick people like us. And, 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 and you have these 20 women who are here to fall in love. You see, they've already made a decision, they're here to love this guy. They've made a choice of love. And then they're going to put them, I used to think they fake emotions, but then they're going to put them in situations where they're going to have to make choices of love, okay? They'll take, this, they'll take uh, one of the girls, take them out with the guy, and they're going to be going fishing. But lo and behold, there's only one fishing road, and so she has to make a choice of love and, and, and sacrifice her fishing road and give it to the man. She's making choices of love along the show. And before they, you know it, they put her in a limousine with a, micro, with, with a camera, and she's been told to go home, and the tears will just come. I thought we felt, I felt so. Something. I thought we had something. The feelings of love have followed. If you make the choice of love, it's good news. If you make the choice of love, the feelings of love will follow. Amen? Super Joe. But let me invite my wife here. We're going to finish up with prayer. Listen, guys. <laughs> love is a choice. And I want us to remember the big choice that some of us have made and some of you will make. Remember your vow. But also remember that love is, is, is really in the small choices that we make every day. And if we do that, we will really get the relationship that we've, ever, we've always wanted. The relationship that God came, sent his son for, an abundant life. I want us to pray. Is that okay? I want us to pray. And I'm standing here with my wife because we are already standing, because I'm going to be asking us to stand to pray. If you're a couple and you're here together and you really feel like you want to make right choices going forward, um, and even if maybe you're here and your spouse is not here, you're welcome to stand as well. Let me ask for every couple in the building who perhaps wants a new start and a fresh start, they want to do it God's way going forward, would you stand? We're standing with you here, my wife and I, because we know we also need to make that choice this very day. Please stand. If you're saying, hey, you know what, God? I want to do it your way. I want to choose my wife. I want to choose my husband on a daily basis. And also let me invite, if you're in, in a loving relationship as well, that is saying today, I, I want to do it God's way. Go ahead and stand. And, 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 amen. And do you know, if you can hold hands, go ahead. <laughs> and if you know of a couple or a relationship that you want to pray for as well and stand in the gap for them this day as we commit to praying, to do things God's way, we also want to invite you to stand and commit ourselves and our friends and family in prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, on our own, we cannot love the way you have commanded. It seems impossible, honestly. On our own, our vows to love like you do are heavy and burdensome. To be the kind of children who do like what dad does is not easy. So Lord, we pray for your help. May we be people that choose to love our spouses and put them first 
and trust that you will do what you promised. And that is to heal our broken hearts and heal our marriages. Give us an abundant life, the life that your son came to give us. An abundant life. That our relationships and our marriage will flourish. Lord, this afternoon we pray for any marriage that is cold and dying, those that even seem dead, breathe your life into them like you did Adam in the garden. In Jesus' name, we call out to the dry bones in our marriages and relationships. Come to life. Come alive. With the dead hearts, come alive in Jesus' name. Come alive. Father, allow that our broken hearts would be mended by your, your love and your peace. Again, we trust that you will do what only you can do, and that is heal us from within and heal our relationships. Nothing, nothing is really impossible with you. Nothing, nothing, no marriage, no relationship here is impossible if we only turn to you and make you the center of our lives. We choose to love and we start with obedience. Friends, if, if you're here and you want also to make a big choice today, if you're here and you want to choose Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, saying, I want to begin all my relationships going forward with Christ as Lord in my life, lift your, would you lift up your hand and I'll see it from here. I want to pray with you as we finish. Anyone who's saying yes to Jesus Christ this morning, anyone who's making a big choice, that is the biggest choice you'll ever make. Are you here? Amen. Father, thank you for that hand. Thank you for your healing. Thank you that you're receiving this child, this son, into your kingdom right here and right now. Thank you that their sins are forgiven. And even as they repent, which means to turn away from their past, would you give them the Holy Spirit to guide and to lead in everything that concerns their life. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for what you've done here. As we step into this week, we pray, bless us, and help us choose your path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give God. Just remain standing, church. If you did pray that prayer, if you did put up your hand to receive Christ, our prayer counselors will be at the front. We would love to lead you in the sinner's prayer and just get your details and walk with you in this new journey. Um, because I'm a Sunday school teacher, I feel the need to give everybody homework, particularly the married couples. This week, why don't you go out and pull out your wedding album, okay? You remember those pictures we were seeing up here? Why don't you pull them out and just reminisce over how far you've come and, and pray over each other in your marriage that God will take you um, to those 30, 40 years. But let me invite everybody else to now join the rest of us on our feet. And shall we end this service with the precious words of the grace um, and let us pray them together. May the grace of, of our, our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and, and the, the love, love of God, God and, and the, the fellowship, fellowship of, of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us now and, and forevermore. Amen. amen and amen. All right. Go with God. See you guys next week.